<laughs> Welcome to Vidigo Church. We haven't been recording lately because we haven't really been outside. And because we're an outside church, not going outside means outside. So we kind of have been postponed. A, we haven't had a computer. B, our laptop's down. C, we've been trying to use the phone, <laughs> but E.T. just won't phone home. So the reality is, is that we finally went ahead and came up with some money, you know, to put together to buy a really old, really small kind of tower unit that I can use some of my other gear to possibly record some messages. But one of the things that I've been noticing lately is that while I was gone from Facebook, as God told me to stop posting, and I did, whenever the Lord speaks to me direct, I kind of pay attention. Now, I don't know if you ever listen to God or if you've ever heard God speak, but when God talks to me, I have no doubt about what he said or what he means. I don't know why or the wherefore, meaning that I don't know what the end result is, but if he says, do something, I go do it. If he says, go somewhere, I go there. Some people say that makes me a Jesus freak. Some people say that makes me a Jesus gypsy. But I got news for you. According to Barry McGuire, I'm just riding with that cosmic cowboy out on a starry plane. He's a supernatural cowboy, and he's dressed up kind of strange. <laughs> but uh, seriously, I have had the opportunity to maybe look at one of your posts, or maybe some of the things you've been doing, while I haven't been posting. And some of you, you know, I don't know if you're planning on going into rapture, which isn't going to happen in 2016. Sorry, not going to happen. So don't get all, you know, goo-goo-eyed over some false prophet running around America telling you that, oh, the Shemitah has happened or some Jewish thing, you know. And pardon me, but being Jewish, I can tell you, bull, <laughs> and I'm not talking about riding a bull, although a lot of times when I read something on Facebook, that's what it sounds like the person posting is doing, riding a bull for at least three seconds of your attention in order to deceive you. Because that's part of the problem that's happening on Facebook, as well as in the church today. People aren't researching on their own. They aren't talking to God and having God teach them. One of the things that we do at Video Church is we always stress, impress, redress, and constantly say, look, it's not the Bible says. I'm sorry. The Bible is a book. A book is a book. You know, and I have quite a few books around here. Matter of fact, this one's called the Open Bible. Well, it's closed, but now it's open. You get my point? Catch my drift? Not my kayak, so how can you drift? But people are drifting away from the truth that Jesus said. My sheep hear my voice, and they know me, and they will not follow the voice of another. A lot of pastors are teaching expositional teaching by saying, listen to me, what I've learned, and then you follow my teaching so that you'll do the same thing I'm doing in following this book, which is our standard of faith. Really? This book, so that you won't go astray. Isn't that how the Mormons came about? You know, don't listen to what people, you know, listen to me. Well, unfortunately, people take this book and they make it into a god. They try to say that it's, Mwah! kiss it, read it, do it, believe it, which is up to a point sort of right. But it's just a book. What makes it more than a book, what makes this apply to here and in here, is it like mwah, 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 chewing on it? It's not what we're talking about. Feeding on the Word of God. No. You see, first of all, the Bible's a Bible, which is why we call it a Bible. The Word of God is the Word of God, which is why it's called the Word of God. So let's get words down. Jesus said, yes is yes. Yes doesn't mean no. Yes doesn't mean maybe. Yes is yes. This is how we teach little children in kindergarten. This is how we teach little children growing up, if you're a parent, hopefully. And no is no. And matter of fact, when I say no, 
everybody jumps out of their shorts. Well, they know I mean it. So I don't want to yell, preach, teach, you know, and insist on, hey, it's just a book. But it is. What makes this become more than alive, what makes this become the, as they say in the Spurgeon days, veritable, nice word, I like that, veritable word of God, what they mean, which they don't tell you in pastor class or in, you know, kind of like, uh, you know, like wherever you're going, Bible college, you know, or theology school, that the Spirit of God is required to understand this book. You can't just open the book and come up with Jesus. I mean, no offense, but there's a lot of people reading this that are Jewish and they come up with it and they go, uh-uh, they reject it. The entire New Testament. Some have found Jesus because God has spoken to them direct and used this as an object to redirect their mind to focus in on the sublime, which is who God is. Sublime. He is the creator of all. So he has to initiate in you a response to this by the Spirit of God. Except God draws a man unto himself, he doesn't come to God. So a lot of people are out there wasting a lot of time. You know, I mean, no offense, but they are. You know, like, oh, now we're going to have a you know, revival for the entire nation. You know, kind of like Billy Graham's son is running around the nation getting everybody to vote. I thought he was getting everybody to pray. Well, he mixes the two, so who knows. And then Greg, you know, he wants to do like a, hey, let's have a mega live. What's the difference between live and can? Nothing. But okay. Mega live so that we can say it's live and that while you're watching it, it's live. But really, it's over a video camera. So is that more like canned or, you know, like digital live? Hmm. So what would be the difference if you watched it tomorrow? Nothing. Absolutely nothing. It'd still be live. I mean, technically. It's just re-recorded or pre-recorded or recorded. Matter of fact, I prefer recorded because then they could do a little editing, you know, a little shining it up. But they're going to do some kind of national thing, which is like anytime you get the nation involved, I think you got a problem because God wants to talk direct, you know. And he may use it, but some people may abuse it and some people may confuse it. So... I think it's better off if you took Jesus at his word. And I'm glad that all these guys are doing their thing. You know, Billy Graham's kid, you know, Frank and, you know, Greg and, you know, Rick and, you know, all the other guys out there. But me, I kind of like, you know, <sighs> kicking back, being still opening a book, and going, hmm, Lord, what do you want to tell me today? Whoa, really? That fits? You see, it's the Word of God, by the Spirit of God, to the people of God, of the Son of God, Jesus. People call me a Jesus freak because I keep saying, you got to know Jesus, because otherwise you're going to hell. Pretty easy message. Do you know Jesus? Well, yeah, I, you know, I read about. No, I didn't ask if you read about. I said, do you know Jesus? Well, you know, I talk, of, you know, I go to church. I didn't ask if you go to church. Do you know Jesus? Well, you know, I, I talk to this. I, I said the sinner's prayer. You know, I, I, I swear, you know, I, I put my hand on the TV and I raise my right hand to God. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to God. I didn't ask you that. Do you know Jesus? Easy question. Yes is yes. No is no. Book is book. Spirit of God, Spirit of God. Word of God, Word of God. So, can I ask you a question? Hmm. Maybe this is a little confusing to you. Maybe we ought to talk like we know something else is going on. Like you ain't listening quite to what I'm saying. Because you know what? I think more people that are just simple folk, they kind of get it. And the people that are confused folk, they don't get it. When they're so smart that they think they're smart, that they don't know that they're not smart. So what happens is that they don't know. Because the only thing I'm asking is, do you know Jesus? If you don't. Well, because we're talking about a book. The book writes what's written in the book. Written in the book. First John, 
I don't really go by those addresses. They were added to the book. But in the book, he who has the Son has life. He who has not the Son of God has not life. Now, we believe because we believe, we, you know, then we believe because we believe. Well, your belief might be nice, but I don't know if it's going to get you to heaven. Pardon me, but when God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, doesn't mean would not perish. It just means, hey, you know, God so loved the world, he provided a way of escape. That is, in what some evangelicals will say, and, you know, even now religious leaders will say, well, you know, you got to have a personal relationship. So, what I'm asking you is, do you have a personal relationship with a book? I mean, come on now, you know. Anybody home? Hello? I don't know about you, but I like the book. I like my devotionals. I like the jackass down the street who's talking that really is a mule in disguise. Because, after all, if God is speaking through him, then maybe church is good. If God is speaking through, you know, Franklin Graham, then, hey, you know, make it apply. You know, if God is using great glory as evangelist, praise the Lord. Sometimes I think he goes a little too far, but that's okay. You know, I mean, I like him as an evangelist. I think Greg Laurie is dynamic speaker. I got saved at his ministry. You know, I, I remember way back when he had hair, but I don't follow Greg. I don't follow Frank. I don't follow the book. I know Jesus, so Jesus said I would hear his voice. Now, the biggest problem I had at Calvary Chapel, Costa Mesa, was I had no problem. I, I, I was like a sponge. SpongeBob. I mean, I was sucking it up and soaking it up and taking it all in. Everyone around me said, you got to know Jesus. You got to hear God speak and God's going to speak to you. You know, he's either going to do it through the word, through circumstances, audibly. Now they don't say audibly anymore. They say, oh, don't do that. You could be misled. Hear that, Lord? I could be misled. Hey, between you and me, what am I being misled about? Peace, love, joy, Jesus. Wow. Such a deal to be misled in such a way. Oy, hey, I should be misled more often. So the question I have for you is, what are you doing about Jesus? I mean, I don't care if you go, you know, there to the book and say, well, my faith is based upon, you know, my doctrinal statements and my statement of faith and my, uh, what do they call it now? The My distinctives, they're written right here, right? Really? <laughs> what distinctive? Follow me. You know, it's what Jesus said, but okay, if your distinctive is follow Calvary Chapel, then go be distinctive. I kind of like being a Jesus freak, because people call me freakish about this idea that I want to follow Jesus, and I want to know him, and I want to know his father. So I want to know Jesus. Now, don't get me wrong, I know a lot about the book. Matter of fact, I could probably um, give you some dissertations that might blow your mind as far as theology is concerned. I found it a waste of time. No offense. But I found that systematic theology was actually false in his premise about trying to prove God exists when God starts with the Bible itself and just says, in the beginning, God. Whoa! Hey, doesn't sound very um, systemic or uh, provable. What do we have to prove? There's the earth. Here we are. There's God. Ooh, did you talk to him lately? That's all I can say is that it sounds stupid to me when people are talking about, well, you know, you gotta, you got to learn more about the Bible. Start in Genesis and go through that. Why? How about find out what Jesus has to say and then do what Jesus said? I mean, I like you to study the Bible. It's kind of a nice book to learn. You know, it's a little better than, you know, like Fifty Shades of Grey or, you know, whatever you're reading lately, you know. Mm -hmm. Facebook, you know, posts, political advertisements, you know. But what do you know? Who do you know? How or why do you know? So, really, what I'm asking you is, you know, let me get this clear. No, I'm kidding. I'm not going to put the glasses on. Oh, you don't know Jesus. <laughs> okay, I got it. You can let me be the first to tell you and shock your shorts off. 
Okay, put the shorts back on. Let me be the one to bless your socks off. You can know Jesus. Woohoo! Hee <laughs> Yippee yippee! Kaye. Don't go there. But you can know Jesus, and Jesus said he would speak to you, he would direct you, he would guide you, he would abide with you, he would live in you, he would be there speaking to you, even in a still small voice. And what's worse, worse, better, you would know God too. But you can't know God, you can't see him at any time, except for the son of God who has revealed him to you. i got news for you, folks. you got to get it, because if you don't got it, you don't get it, you're not going to go there because you don't have it. In other words, if you don't got the Son, you don't got eternal life. If you don't got Jesus, you're not going in a rapture. What would you do there? Uh, uh, and you'd be down there pretty quick. Because you see, God doesn't just create you to be like stupid. He said, I created you to have fellowship with me. Fellowship means knowing. In other words, do you have fellowship with, say you're married. Okay, do you have fellowship with your wife? You do? Good. Do you have fellowship with air? No? You don't? I think you do. You see, you're taking in air, and your lungs are going... And they're taking in oxygen, and they're going, hey, let's take all that, you know, like dirty stuff that's been inside your body, and let's get it out of your body. Let's bring in the oxygen and expel the carbon dioxide, so to speak. Or bring in the good air, blow out the bad air. In other words, what you're blowing out, you don't want to breathe in because it probably suffocates you. You need oxygen to live. That's what God is saying about himself. Without you, you'll die. I mean, without him, you'll die. You need to breathe in the Spirit of God, or breathe in the Word of God, or breathe in life from God, and all that, you know, which is really Jesus speaking to you, and it'll go inside your body, it'll do like oxygen does, you know, and your lungs will go like, you know, taking all the dirty crap out of the blood system, and, you know, dumping it into the oxygen air, you know, kind of combination, and expiate it back out, and you'll go, man, let's send it over to one of the plants that can convert that back into oxygen so we can breathe and live. I mean, really, because you don't breathe water. You have a fellowship with the oxygen you breathe. You allow it to change you by your e unconscionable or we would say autonomous response of the body that automatically breathes in and out unless you're talking so long that you go, <gasps> man, I wish you'd shut up. But until you finally get that idea that you need the oxygen, you don't have fellowship with Jesus. I mean, you're kind of like going to church and have fellowship with the church. You got fellowship with your brother. You got fellowship with the pastor. You got fellowship with worship. You know, you like stand on the backside, you know, worshiping the upside, you know, because there's those guys on the front side, you know, instead of the people on the backside. And you can hear them and they can't carry a tune. So you're kind of doing this thing that you're saying, hey, I'll just put my ear pods in, you know, and just go ahead and have my own worship at home. Some stink here. I think it's called stinking thinking. Because church isn't really having a relationship with Jesus. I'm sorry. It's not. It's the sandlot. It's the preschool. It's kindergarten in the area of faith. Church is not the end result. It's not. It's supposed to give birth to people that have a relationship with God. And they go on to have great exploits, wonderful experiences, even die as martyrs maybe, or die in the faith, and go on to be with Jesus in heaven and get all kinds of, you know, like, fancy hats, we'll say. Crowns, so to speak. I don't think you're going to be wearing a crown, but, you know, you can understand things a little better once you get there. So the reality is, why and what are you doing about Jesus? Because that's what it all boils down to. Do you have a relationship with Jesus? Do you have fellowship? I don't care about your church. I don't care about your religion even. I mean, God knows if a Muslim has a relationship with Jesus, hey, Jesus will lead him, you know, wherever he wants to. You know, leave him alone. But today we have people that have fellowship with the world. Politics is definitely worldliness. I mean, come on. If you're a political Christian, you're a worldly Christian. Obviously. If you're in the military, you know, and you're, yes, sir, you know, fighting for your country and flag, and then God. 
Because it isn't God and country, because God already told you what to do. Go save those suckers. Don't kill them. That's what Jesus said. Remember? Yes is yes. No is no. Don't kill. It doesn't say don't murder. It says don't kill, period. If you want to argue about it, then go love your enemy and see how you can do that without um, killing them. Hmm. Interesting predicament. So, you're a worldly Christian. You're a carnal Christian. You're part of the world system if you're in the military. Even police officers have to kind of, you know, walk the line, so to speak, because they're kind of like, well, yeah, I'm kind of like, you know, not really a violent person, but I have to exercise violence at times. I wonder how that works with God. Have you asked him? Go ahead. I dare any military man to contact me and tell me that, you know, you talk to Jesus. Then you're going to be accountable to Jesus because I dare everyone on Facebook at any time. You know, if I'm wrong, tell me, show me, explain it to me. I'm all ears. I'll listen. I'll ask you a few pointed questions that you can answer, and I'll give you plenty of time to answer, years to answer. But you can't answer them. You can't answer why your yes is yes and no is no. Because your yes is no, and your no is yes. And you think that there's gray areas. Or there's interpretation. Well, we have to interpret this. Why? Didn't Jesus say, my sheep hear my voice? And they know me? What's he mean by that? Did he just write it because it was that time? And some people will say that. And I'll say, well, what about this? And show you where that's wrong, too. Because, you see, when it comes to this, you have no excuse. Everything about this is simply one thing. Jesus. So I like to cut to the quick. If you want to learn about this and realize just how guilty you are, the volume of the book will prove you need Jesus. That's it. And that's why they call me a Jesus freak. Sometimes a Jesus gypsy, because I move around a lot, you know. But, hey, you know, it's one of those things. The wind bloweth with her will. You neither know where it's coming from nor where it's going. So, too, is everyone led by the Spirit of God. So, in May 1st, I'm going down the Mississippi River as the Mississippi River preacher, because that's what I am. Now, here, I'm the preacher, period, at Video Church. Utah's only outdoor church, but Vidivo Church on the internet is Vidivo Ministries and the Biblical Christian Network that accumulates and accrues all the other ministries that are involved and people that want to remind you that the Bible says and Jesus says and God says that you should love your enemies. You should be at peace. You should have joy. Don't get involved in politics. Don't get involved in the military. Don't go out killing people. Guns and roses is not something that goes together any more than guns and Christians. They don't go together. Your gun, no offense, is right here. The Word of God. If you'll use it as the Spirit of God leads you. If you try to just quote it and speak it, you're just beating somebody up with a Bible. Bible thumping. That's what they do when they just quote it without God telling them to say it. And that's why we have to get back to the simple statement, the simple question, do you know Jesus? Because if you don't, you're going to hell. Really. You are. There's no doubt about it. First John proved it. John said it. Jesus said it. God said it. What else do you need? You want the church to say it? Are you kidding me? You want, like, great glory to say it? He will. you got to work on it, but he'll say it. You want Franklin Graham to say it? Well, you know, some of his crusades he does. You know what I mean? When he's not talking about politics or something else, I don't know what he talks about. I don't listen to it. But I can tell you this pretty clearly, you know, I mean, besides the purpose driven life, which is pretty right on book and pretty right on teaching, Rick will tell you, I mean, you know, and it doesn't take him that long to tell you that, you know, you got to know Jesus, period. I mean, that's the way it works out. You don't get to heaven without him. So I can understand if you're on a journey, you know, and you have to take your time. And you're hmm, thinking about it. You want to play around a little bit first, sin enough, you know, get desperate enough, get crazy enough, get dead enough to need Jesus. Well, they do say that only a hungry man is hungry. Only a thirsty man is thirsty. So if you're listening to this and you're not hungry or thirsty and you don't want to know Jesus, Go away. Seriously. I'm dead serious. I mean, 
People thought I was kidding the first time I said that, you know, at Video Church. I said, look, I'm not interested in you being here and taking up space. I'd rather preach to no one there and have the angels be witness to than to have someone there who isn't paying attention and trying to get to know Jesus better. Because if you're trying, then you're there. If you're not trying, you ain't there and you're lying to yourself. You'll be led into the Great Tribulation where you'll have an easier gospel. I'll be honest with you, the gospel is pretty simple in the Great Tribulation. See this? Right here, this hand? See this forehead? Don't put anything on it. Period. We don't have to get too complicated about this. We can go pretty simple. Don't put anything here. Don't put anything here. Not a name. Not a number. Not the number of his name. Not a chip. If you believe in chips, which chips don't have anything to do with the image of the beast or the number of his name or the the mark of the beast. Bio chips have nothing to do with that. I'm sorry. You know, I know people think it does because now they're on the tech phase, you know, phrase and kind of playing games with man-made ideas, not God-said prophecies. Because God, as far as he's concerned, hey, this could say USA, right? Right here, USA, all the way, you know, and you wind up going to hell in the Great Tribulation. Because, frankly, God is making it pretty simple in the Great Tribulation period. You're going to die. Because you got to get a mark. you got to get a stamp on your hand. you got to get a license to be working, literally, in wherever you're working or doing. They're going to come after you. And if they don't, demons will. Because if you don't have the mark, they're going to come out and torture you. Yeah. Hell itself is going to be opened up and man, there are going to be things flying out, coming out, attacking you that you're going to make Walking Dead look like a comic book. It's going to make eye zombies look like, I need a zombie because there will be zombies in the Great Tribulation period. About as close to a zombie as you can get, they'll be Walking Dead. I mean, they will be physically people that are soulless. Now, in the Hebrew, they call them golems, but, you know, a soulless body. But they'll have no soul, really, because they're already condemned. They know it. They're condemned to death. They will have already gotten past the point of repentance. God will not allow them to die, but they will experience physical deterioration, and death will not be permitted to them. They will actually see God and live for a short period of time before they're condemned to hell and cast into the lake of fire. Now you want to go there, great, you know, get prepared. Watch zombies, watch political ads, watch Nazism rising again, watch violent things, sign up for your NRA membership and renew it continually. You know, get politically active, be, have a world vision. Yeah, go into Great Tribulation. If you can't handle the gospel now, then go there and then only just resist or just say, okay, I choose not to take the mark here and I don't take any mark there. I won't take anything at all. I, you know, I, I'm going to be a purist. I'm going to hide in my little cave. You know, Mormons prepare for this with my seven years of food, you know, and do all these things, you know, just to make sure that I make it through. Or I'll resist unto death. Really? Have you ever seen a child peeled alive? in torture, if it's your child, and you allow them to go into great tribulation with you, because they will. There's no such thing as a rapture for everybody that's going to, you know, all the children are just going to go poof, you know, they disappear, and there's no children left after the rapture. Want to bet? Jesus said, woe unto those in those days that bear children and they give suck, which means, you know, to the breastfeeding. I got news for you. I don't know what kind of books you're reading, but you're not talking to Jesus. Jesus is clear. Jesus said, even if you don't know and you don't want to hear from me, ask God my Father and he'll speak to you. James 1.5 If any man, any man, woman, child, whatever, lacks wisdom, let him ask of God. Who will it up and give it to him. Whatever. I'm not misquoting. These aren't out of context. These aren't out of proportion. If you want a whole book of the Bible about it, start in Genesis and go through Revelation. I'll take you through step by step. Every inch of the way, how God speaks, God directs, and God is talking about listening to him. Period. I take you from there, just using James and applying it in every book of the Bible. All the way through, including Song of Solomon. Really? Without being metaphorical? Hey, what can I say? That's the Spirit of God that can do that. 
But my point is, Jesus. Your point is, Jesus. If you don't know Jesus, you're going to hell. And I got news for you. I'm not going to stop you. Spurgeon said, you know, well, let them go to hell over our dead bodies or, you know, us clutching them by their shirts and shirt sleeves. That's not what Jesus said. You see, there's a lot of things in church history that Jesus didn't say, the Bible doesn't say, and frankly, theology made up along the way because it dealt with things going on at their time. But we live in the latter days. We live in the last days. 2016 is not the end of the world. 2017 begins the last phase of pre-rapture, you could say. Or we'll say it this way. The last phase of the Spirit of God being withdrawn from the world because God himself said, my spirit will not always strive with man. And it's being obvious now, as you see false prophets arise, the spirit of Antichrist has gone out into the world and it has sown seed and that seed is growing. You'll see it. In America, we see people that once accepted Muslims as being peace-loving. Come on now. There was Black Panthers and there was Malcolm X. Let's be real. Go back to the 60s. Let's see some Muslims, you know. I mean, come on. People were talking about different people like Mahatma Gandhi or other people that were from other religions that were not violent, non-violence. Do you think God was telling us something? Sometimes he uses other religions to tell us how we should be. Dare I say, with all the hate in the political arena, you think that Donald Trump is joking? No, he's flirting with the demonic entity that is helping to influence people around him. Oh yeah, fame, fortune, rich, be rich, be rich. After all, it's only money. Greed is good, right? And yet Jesus said, you cannot serve God and man. So, I got news for you. If you're in the military, you really want to do this, or do you want to do this? Because you can't do both. If you're serving in the military, do your duty. You signed up. Don't break your covenant. Do what you're supposed to. Get out. You don't get any time left. You might make it through 2017, maybe, but what if you get shipped to Jerusalem? What if you get sent to the ghetto? What if you're told to attack or be there when Russia, Gog and Magog, or the tribes of the north, doesn't matter who they are, by today's names, Gog, Magog, and those in the north, suddenly attack Israel, and you're standing in the middle. You're wiped out. Do you think God says, well done, smart? I warned you not to go there, and you went there anyways. So grace applies? How about stupid applies? Stinking thinking. Yes is yes, no is no. If you ask God in every circumstance of your life what to do, where to go, what to say, He has shown me, oh man, what is good and what the Lord requires of thee, but to do justly and to love mercy and to walk humbly with thy God. Where to go, what to do, what to say. I can't remember the song, but anyways, the Calvary Chapel old kind of Jesus freakish song that we used to sing was Where to go, what to do, what to say. I mean, really, and we used to sing it. I can't sing it now because I haven't sang it in a while, but normally that's what worship is. It's just what pops up out of your brain just at the spur of the moment, not what's pre-programmed with, you know, sets. Oh, let's have a worship conference so that we can talk about how we influence people and how we need to influence these people. And we need to be influenced first. So that first we have to have our worship down so that we can worship with those and lead them into the worship so they can worship. Hey, news for you. Spirit and truth had nothing to do with going to a worship conference. Spirit and truth had to do with little children. You look at a little children and go, da da do do ba da 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 ba 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 And I'm not talking in tongues. I'm talking baby talk. Let's get real here. A child responds to love and just babbles whatever it wants to. It's not a language, it's babbling out of love. It laughs, it has joy. You can sing songs that have meaning, but you should write your own song. Make your own kind of music. Sing your own special song. Make your own kind of music, even if nobody else sings along. Hey! Yes, you can, even if you're out of tune. You can't carry a tune. Can't play guitar, whatever.
You can do it. You got something going on. Woo! You can make music, for sure. It's not about all the instruments we got nowadays. Man, I'll tell you. If I hear one more sound tech story or one more, you know, because I've worked soundboards, I mean, people say, was it my Calvary Chapel pastor? Said, never mind. His pride got in the way and his offense, and he got all freaked out. Dragged me behind the scenes and yelled at me. It's like, just God about this first? What is God trying to teach us through this? And I tried to, you know, impress that upon him because it was like, didn't make any sense to me either, but it's like, how can I not make any sense to you? Well, I don't know. Let's pray. I don't want to pray right now. You should be able to. Okay. Pastor, you don't want to pray. Fine. You'll figure it out when you get older. <laughs> I'm sure he's doing fine now, but, you know, it's just. Tech is tech, and tech is not something that God said, hey, I'm going to have tech in heaven. Yeah, it's just tech. Accidents happen. Things happen. Praise the Lord. Even this, you know, this isn't witnessing. This is just allowing God to use what he chooses to use. So, what I'm communicating to you here today in Video Church is, go your way. I agree. Go your way. Go do your thing. Go on. You know, if you're a political Christian, go be political. If you're a carnal Christian, go be carnal. If you're in sin, go sin. Get over it. Get done with it. Get out of it. Get on with it. Because you're wasting hard in time, but you're wasting your time. You're wasting the people around you's time while they're waiting for you to grow up. Because Jesus said signs and wonders would accompany those who believe. And I don't mean like, you know, the kind of television, slap them in the head, knock them dead. Those guys probably do have some gift. They abused it. Maybe they confused it. Maybe they used it. I don't know. But that's not my servant. If I hired a guy, I'd tell him what to do and how to do it. If God wants to test us, or test me especially, because they drive me nuts, then he'll send somebody like that into my life, and you know, I'll look at them and go, you really think that barking is looking like you know spiritual, and that that's from God? Yeah, man, you know, haven't you ever looked on Facebook? They got a lot of doggies on there, so it must be God, so we're supposed to go around going, <laughs> and rolling around on the ground. Well, the Pentecostals used to roll around on the ground, so... Why can't the vineyards, you know, and their thing go rolling around on the ground barking? I mean, it's because it's a bunch of white boys. <laughs> just kidding. But seriously, I mean, Pentecostalism is just simply overvescent, overjoyed, and they get it carried away, you know. And some people, maybe they get carried away to look like dogs. But then again, don't they do that on Facebook already? You know, dress their dog, worship their dog, praise their dog, take their dog to psychologists, go to a dog whisperer and a horse whisperer, all these other whispers. My God doesn't whisper to me. He speaks to me in a still small voice. That's not a whisper. Still small voice is not like the great shouting that you hear from megaphones or, you know, some preacher yelling at you and screaming. But, hey, if you want to go for that, go for it. I don't care. But do you know Jesus? You see, I haven't changed in 40 plus years. I don't care if you're a Catholic, a Protestant, a Mormon. You hear that? I don't care if you're a Mormon. I don't care if you're a Muslim. I don't care if you're Sunni, Sufi. Um, <laughs> cowboy, cowgirl, <laughs> Jewish, hey, atheist. There are no atheists, by the way. That's such a lie. You know, they have all these different, um, what do they call them? Things to argue. So they, they want to argue for God because God can't defend himself. You know, I can't, think, I can't even think of what it's called. It's even, the word means argument. So, I don't know. <laughs> I can't even think of what it's called. Shows you how, how bad it is that I just think, what a waste of time. I mean, I know how to do them all, but it's just like such a waste of time. You're not going to argue anyone into heaven. You just aren't. Apologetic. Everybody's apologizing for God. Well, I'm sorry. I'm such a lousy witness, but I have to talk you into God. So they come up with all these different techniques, motivations. Well, are you a liar? Everybody's a liar. So, you know, blah, blah, blah. 
You you know you you broke it off so now you know. all these gimmicks. God doesn't need a gimmick. Jesus walked up and said, "Follow me." Okay. Follow me. Okay. I got my own. I'm not Tebow, and I'm not whoever the football player was, the Panther. I just I'm not. I kind of like. Archie Manning's kind of, or Archie Manning's, or whatever Manning, some kind of, Peyton Manning, oh, okay, Archie Manning, I guess I'm getting old. One of the Mannings, some kind of Manning, I liked his statement about man upstairs. Now, you know, God isn't the man upstairs, the son of man's upstairs, so he's kind of like the man upstairs, so, you know, Jesus is the man upstairs, so, you know, do you know the man upstairs? I mean, I don't care how you approach, how you speak, how you talk or walk, what I care about only now, because it's too late, you only got maybe a year or two left. I mean, like I said, the rapture is not in 2016, but you're going to pretty much confirm yourself about not going through this year of deception. But, hey, uh, do you know Jesus? Do you? You see, on the Mississippi River Preach, you know, that's kind of what I'm doing. I'm not teaching. You know, I mean, I know how to teach, believe me. Oh, what a waste of time. Teaching meant you live with someone, really. I mean, that's the Jewish way. So, you know, if you don't live with me, guess what? You're not getting taught. You're just getting bought with a price by Jesus doing it himself because he's using the Spirit of God through somebody like me to preach over some kind of venue, menu, and kind of, you know, tech industry that, you know, manifests itself through this video conferencing that we're doing because actually behind the scenes the Spirit's going, and you don't see it. But I do, and I know it, because I can sense him, and I can feel him, and he can talk to me, and he can walk with me, and he abides in me, and so I realize that it's the Spirit of God behind the scenes, even while I'm talking to you, doing what he's doing in order to rearrange things of your hearing, so that you would have ears to hear what it is the Spirit of God is saying, and then while you're watching, you know, you're seeing things, because you would have eyes to see what it is that the Spirit of God wants to reveal to you. So it doesn't even matter whether I'm wearing a hat, or where I'm wearing clothes or not. Don't look down. Shorts. Oh well, it's warm in the house. What can I say? I'm planning on summer. I'm, I'm getting ready for Mississippi. 100 degree weather. Yay! 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 Let's get rid of winter. But the point being is that... Do you know Jesus? Really? Do you know Jesus? I gotta admit, I don't know him as well as I'd like to. You know, I'm looking forward to meeting him face to face. I'm looking forward to you know, checking out his place. I want to see his posse, you know, all the angels. Maybe John and Peter. And, no, I don't want to see Peter. Peter reminds me of too many people I know. Um, Paul, I'd love to meet Paul. I'd love to talk to Paul for a while, you know. Moses, yeah, you know, Moses, Moses, I want to compare. Um, you know, I mean, there are a few people that I'd like to see of, you know, the posse with Jesus, you know. He kind of got that posse up there, you know, that runs around with him you know, everywhere he goes, you know. Kind of like to be a part of that, you know, kind of like to ride up into heaven, you know, kind of be there, you know, with the the man upstairs. I'd kind of like to ride along on, you know, a comet, you know, kind of discover the universe, you know, kind of looks like fun thing to do. But seriously, without being into, you know, vernacular and vulgar or uh, colloquialisms, I prefer that you would discover what God's colloquial is, and that is for the Spirit of God to take this Bible, this book, and bust your chops. Because, dude, I know you. You're no different than I am. As soon as you turn your TV off, this video off, you're going to go watch, what is it right now? Basketball. The Sweet 16. Where do they get these words? You're going to go, oh, the debates. You're going to go debate. You know, you're going to go follow Trump or Hillary or Bernie. Uh, or you're going to go badmouth somebody. You know, I love the Christians that badmouth other people. I, I'm badmouthing Christians. Stinking thinking. What are you doing, stupid? I mean, isn't Bernie Sanders someone you want to be a Christian? Okay, forget that part. I don't want him to be a Christian. No offense, I don't want you to be a Christian either. I'd rather you knew Jesus because, believe me, from what I see of American Christians, can't stand them. I stay as far away from them as I can. I don't want to get infected with whatever they got. Must be something like swine flu or chicken pox or maybe a fever. Because, believe me, they aren't like, you know, loving and, you know, peaceful and joyful. 
Well, except for maybe an hour or two on Sunday, but other than that, come on now, you know. I mean, you know, I took my car to a mechanic, Christian mechanic. Ah, working for a boss who's a Mormon, you know, that, that's okay. Christian mechanic. So he told my wife, you know, nice guy. Told my wife, well, we've looked at your car. You better buy a new car because, you know, you've got a blown head gasket, which pretty much, you know, writes off a car that's only worth a couple grand or maybe four grand, three grand, five grand. I forget what we paid. You know, Christian, counting on his professional opinion as a mechanic, I'll admit it's not Christianity. He may be a dynamic Christian. Who knows? Maybe he just sucks at his job. So she comes home and tells me, you know, well, you know the Christian at work, because, you know, when she was working at that job, there weren't that many, you know, I mean, she couldn't really talk to them or they couldn't, you know, like encourage each other, you know, and pray because, you know, working in the state of Utah, there's a lot of places that they don't want you to, you know, they don't want you to be religious. So you have to kind of, you know, do what Jesus said, pray in your closet at home. My wife does, believe me, every morning. My God, that woman is so faithful. I feel so convicted. <laughs> every time I look at a, you know, I go in my bedroom, you know. We got a bathroom and bedroom, you know, so we got, you know, like two bathrooms, which is kind of nice, you know. What can I say? We're not rich, believe me. Don't think we're rich. We got this apartment, third floor. It's not, you know, we don't have a lot of money. We're cheap. Believe me, we can't afford it. But um, she's in her bathroom, you know, and she closes the door. She, she takes this little stand. She's got her Bible on it. She's got her daily devotions on it. She's got her, for a friend of mine, her Jesus Calling some guy told me, I was like, don't be careful. Don't read Jesus Calling. I mean, it might lead you closer to God. Oh, brother. Eat it. <laughs> Anything that brings you closer to God. Paul said, I would become all things to all men, lest by any means some might be saved. And I thank God that even in spite the guards are preaching the gospel to try to make my case worse. That they're trying to, you know, make fun of it. And uh, yet the gospel's going out. Yeah, that Jesus. Some people are going, huh? What Jesus? Yeah, Jesus. That Jesus. You know, the one that loves his enemies. See, that's what happened to the Jesus movement is that the Jesus movement grew up and became yuppies in religion. They all decided they got to go out and they got to get Bible colleges. They got to go out and get degrees, which they did. You know, they got their degrees. Then they decided, well, Jesus isn't coming that soon. You know, Chuck was wrong. You know, he's not coming soon. He's coming pretty soon. So we're going to go ahead and raise our kids, you know, and have some grandkids, you know, and we're going to get caught up in, you know, just a normal life stuff. And then, oh, by the way, yeah, Jesus is coming, but you don't know when, you know, sooner or later. You know, I mean, you know, but don't worry about that. You know, you'll be taken. It's okay. Just go ahead and go about your business, you know, and just be a good person. Do good, be good, think good. Yeah, right. Hmm. And they quit talking about Jesus. Now, somebody said the Jesus woman was dead. I said, well, it's been going for 2,000 years. I think it's doing pretty good. According to what the book of Revelation says, it's going to be going another eternity. I think it's going pretty good. I don't think you measure success by the numbers. I mean... I don't know if you know my plants, but these plants I got, yeah, you can see that. Okay, yeah, it's pretty good. They grow like a bat out of hell. This plant has been cut 10, 20 times and planted somewhere else and died, some of them. Matter of fact, a lot of them, but I got one over here. It's just like <laughs> monster bush. <laughs> I got plants that I grow upward now because I... You know, they, they normally grow out that way, and it's like taking up too much space, so I started making them trellised and go straight up inside my house. In the dead of winter. Monsters. They grow. But that's part of the problem, is that people got so smart, they took their eyes off Jesus. The Jesus freaks. And I'm going to say, Greg's kind of gotten back to talking about Jesus again. Not just in evangelism, but, you know, in his teaching, which, you know, I love Greg. You know, I love his ministry. I'm not going to Greg for teaching. No offense. Sorry, Greg. You know, I got my own thing going. But, you know, it's I never was part of that kind of shtick. You know, I'm not a yuppie. So I never got into that kind of venue and vain, van, whatever they're, vain, not vanity or vain in the pride, but vain like blood system kind of thingy. 
you know, artery. I'm more like an artery kind of guy. I'm not a vein. So, anyways, you know, he's like more Billy Graham, you know, kind of do this thing, you know. And I, you know, some of it's good, and a lot of people love him, you know. And I, I like getting saved from him, but not my shtick, you know. I'm not into thousands. I'm into one or two that God might use or God might speak to, and they might hear God speak. Because frankly, if I was in great shoes, I couldn't fill them. I would cry every night, looking out over the crowds and knowing how many aren't saved that have, you know, gone forward but aren't saved. It'd break my heart. Because the majority really are going to walk away. They're, you know, the whole idea about, you know, you throw your seed out there, you know, some of it, you know, is on thorny ground, some of it's on, you know, weed, some of it's, you know, whatever, and then the good soil, good ground, you know, whatever. So you just take what you can get. Well, my plants, I grow them. I mean, it's almost like everything I put my hand to grows. I mean, don't get me wrong, I've had a few, you know, of course I was in sin at the time. No, I'm kidding. I'm always in sin somehow, you know, people are going to be offended by this. But, you know, my plants, you know, I, 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 whatever, I mean, I look around this house and go, good God, you know, I mean, I don't have enough room. I need a plantation to grow all my plants. But, um, they grow. They grow and grow and grow. That's kind of what I do. I take a little plant, I just keep growing and growing and growing. You know, whoop, bing. That's from God's spell. Whoop, bing, bing, bing. I love God's spell. Bing. <laughs> so really, I don't care if you're there with Greg or Franklin Graham or, like I said, a Pentecostal or an Evangelical or a Baptist or a Catholic. Even if you're in Mary Knoll, you know, so those Catholics that are into the really extreme parts of, of Mary worship. Um, I don't care if you're into Sacred Hearts or you're into Golden Spectacles, you know, and Golden Books, you know, and you keep reinventing, you know, a different, you know, um, application of keeping everybody in line because you're a big business, you know, now state I live in, um, or, you know, you're into Buddhism, or you're a Muslim, you know, I mean, God knows, a Muslim could teach us how to pray. I think so. I think Daniel prayed like a Muslim. Matter of fact, I'm sure he did. I'm pretty sure that he was probably a Muslim, more or less, that believed in God. Just kidding. He was a Jew. <laughs> but he prayed like a Muslim. And, you know, maybe the Muslims learned from that and stole it from the Old Testament and they started using it. And, you know, Muhammad just kind of borrowed everything anyway. So, hey, there you go. If you only knew world religions like I did, you'd understand it a whole lot better. You wouldn't get so wrapped up on Confucian or Hindu or anything. You know, you wouldn't get so weirded out about it. I mean, it's all one source. It's just deviant and deviated and gone down different directions the same way Christianity has. I mean, evangelical Christianity is making the same mistake today that the Jewish nation did at the time Jesus arrived. Exactly. The Pharisees are definitely modern-day Catholics. Sadducees are very much so um, dominionists. I mean, come on now. Give me a break. You know, and I mean, there's a lot of, there were 32 sects of Jewish religious expression in Israel at the time that Jesus arrived. Maybe a few more, you know, minor detailed ones. And they were making the same mistake from the Torah. Ah! You know, it floats around in the sky, the words. You know, they're like burning emblems, you know. They, they come out of the wall, you know. And we're not talking about Daniel. We're talking about mystics and mysticism. And then also literalists that were politically motivated and religionists that were religiously motivated for the temple politics. And today we have the same thing going on in evangelical circles, or we would say born-again movement. You know, I mean, it's sad because the only thing I want to know is and the only thing God wants to know is, and the only thing Jesus wants to know is, do you know Jesus? Because very soon, you're going to stand right before Jesus, face to face. And I know you're singing that song that says, you know, um, something about, you know, I can only imagine what that day will be. If you have to imagine it, I'm going to bust your chops for a second so, you know, you can tune this off or turn it off or walk away for a minute and come back. If you have to imagine what it's like to stand before Jesus, you don't know Jesus. You don't. Jesus would have already appeared to you in some way, manifesting his love towards you in some manner that you would know Jesus. And you'll know what it would be like to stand before him. Because you're going to go down just like John did, flat on your face. Because you're not going to see Jesus like, you know, some kind of like, you know, effigy of the you know, Marlboro Man or some kind of muscle-bound guy or he's going to be carrying an M16. 
No, you're going to see the Son of Man, the Son of God, in His glory. And you're going to go down on your face. And you're going to worship. You're going to be terrified. But you're going to worship in one way or another. Because every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. You will, out of your own mouth, have words come out that you can't stop them. If it's to your derision, to your condemnation, then you'll be condemned by your own life and by your own words. You'll retell the story of your life and you'll go to hell. If it's just to, you know, admit the facts of your life of being a sinner, saved by grace, hopefully, then Jesus will extend that grace to you when you see him face to face. He'll pick you up. He'll look at you and you'll see the scars. Yeah. You'll see something you won't recognize as being human. Because the glory will shine forth and it will pierce you and you'll stand in your soul and your spirit naked knowing full well you don't deserve anything except to be condemned and go straight to hell. You're not going to be running up to hug Jesus. You're going to be standing there scared out of your mind. And when Jesus does take you in and accepts you and says, well done, you're going to flash on all the things you did not do, not the things you did do. And you'll weep for all the people that didn't make it, that you will know. And you'll know that because for a season, God allows that. And then after Jesus accepts you, there will be a time where sooner or later, you know, God wipes away your tears. Or maybe he does it right then. And then suddenly you remember no more all this behind. And those you did not take the time to tell them about Jesus. Because I don't want to know about your religion. I don't want to know about your church. I don't want to know about your pastor. I don't want to know about your wife, your car, your kids, your grandkids. Or even the Mississippi River trip that I'm going on down in 2016 to be preaching on. As well as enjoying. I'm going down for a good old time. Man. You know, I'm telling you. you know, I'm going to be loving it. Well, let's quit paddling for a while and float. Come on, Jesus. Let's go swimming. What can I say? But at night, firelight. Seriously. Campfire. Oh, there'll be a campfire meeting going on. I'll be talking about Jesus. And maybe I'll record some of them. I'm trying to figure out how to get them all, but maybe I'll record some of them. Same thing with kayaking. I'll be standing on a kayak, preaching to the shore. There may be no one there, but I'll be preaching back to my camp. Because it's what I do. Like somebody from Rich's church said, it's how I roll. <laughs> it's the way I ride my horse. Yeah, that looks pretty cool on my camera. <laughs> I don't know what it looked like to you. But really, it's what we are. A living witness. A testimony of Jesus. Not of all these other things. Get out of them. Get away from them. Walk away for God's sake. Go camping if you have to. Cut off the cable. Cut off your phone. Cut off your... No! But you know what I'm saying. Get real. Get right. And get to know Jesus. Because if you don't know Jesus, you are going to hell.